Death masks first gained notoriety in Egypt, with the most recognizable belonging to King Tut. The Egyptians believed that the death mask, which would be buried with the individual, would allow the person's spirit to find their body in the afterlife. While in some African tribes, it was believed that death masks could imbue the wearer with the power of the deceased. But in the Middle Ages, they became less of a spiritual commodity and more of a way of preserving the memory of the dead. Death masks were made for a range of famous and notable people and were put on display for many to see. And in a time before photography, this could be as close to the real thing as you might get. Death has been, and may always be, shrouded in a veil of intrigue, fear, curiosity and calm. We dig up a few famous faces from their final moments. Dante as with most historical figures who bucked the system, exile seemed to be the main course of action for their actions. Second to execution, of course. Dante, whose death mask may not be genuine, served a long course of exile before his demise. Amidst the political turmoil of Florence in the early 1300s, Dante fell out of favor with the ruling political faction known as the Black Guelphs. He was subsequently exiled, and it was during the time that he wrote his most famous work, The Divine Comedy. And luckily, Dante was able to complete Paradiso, the last part of the almost 15,000 line epic poem, before he contracted malaria and died in 1320. Mary, Queen of Scots, also known as Queen Mary I. Mary, Queen of Scots, suffered from what could be called an unpolished demise. After a life of political turmoil, bouncing around Europe and collecting a long list of enemies, Mary sought asylum from her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I. Instead, she became a prisoner for 19 years in the country she almost ruled. When it came time for her execution, she asked if she could get her affairs in order and was told, No, no, madam, you must die. You simply must die. Be ready between 7 and 8 in the morning. It cannot be delayed a moment beyond that time. When they placed her head on the block, it took the executioner three tries before the beheading was complete. He then held Mary's head high and exclaimed, God save Queen Elizabeth. May all the enemies of the true Evangel thus perish. John Keats in 1819, John Keats contracted tuberculosis, otherwise known as consumption at the time. On the advice of his doctor, he went to Rome with a friend for the warmer weather. For a while, he felt better, but after one year he was bedridden once again. His doctor kept him on a strict diet of a single anchovy and a piece of bread per day, and induced heavy bleeding to cleanse his body. But the process was very painful for Keats and in a true poetic fashion, he asked his doctor, how long is this posthumous existence of mine to go on? His answer came just one year later. Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte's death was caused by gastric cancer, as clearly proven by science. But at the time of his death, Napoleon believed British assassins had murdered him. I die before my time killed by the English oligarchy and its hired assassins. He was recorded as saying. In his final exile, Napoleon somewhat enjoyed his leisurely day-to-day -day lifestyle, but it soon grew tiresome, along with his health. In 1817, he began showing signs of having a stomach ulcer, and while he may have suspiciously, albeit mistakenly, attributed its cause to poison, it certainly was the origin of his fatal bout with stomach cancer. In June 2013, one of only two known death masks of Napoleon Bonaparte saw that auction at Bonman's book, map and manuscript sale in London for roughly $260,000. William Blake While Napoleon's death may have masqueraded as a mystery, William Blake's remains so to this day. While it's known he died of an illness, it's unknown exactly what that illness was. Blake himself exclaimed that he suffered from that sickness to which there is no name. 
leading up to his demise. Blake's life was in downward spiral. His later works received highly negative critiques, and Blake himself was once referred to as an unfortunate lunatic. Perhaps as a vision of his death masks to come, in 1819 Blake began a series of sketches called Visionary Heads. He claimed that the historical figures he drew appeared before him and were modelled for him. That concluded our video on the top 5 famous death masks in history. What do you think? Do tell us your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you again in the next video.